you want to hear the other side about Sanford, Florida? Answer! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So many people, including myself, are always raving about how good Sanford is. But today, I'll be taking just a few minutes to address five things you should know before you move to Sanford, Florida. I'm Chuck Shaver, and I've lived here on the north side of Orlando for many years, and I love Sanford. And some of you will think I'm absolutely nuts for what I'm about to say. But stick around, because I'm betting that some of you will agree with at least a few of these items, and number five is the one that will be most impactful to you if you're thinking about moving here. Then, at the end, I'll be including a bonus concern for locals living near the downtown area. First, the weather is one of the main reasons most of us moved down here in the first place. No snow to shovel or ice to contend with, right? Well, I was expecting that I'd be sitting on one of those beaches just 45 minutes up I-4 all throughout the year. Reality check, I'm probably on the beach no more than, I don't know, twice a year. In fact, I don't even like the beach. I know I sound like some kind of Grinch, and I'm sure I'm going to get plenty of the hate from the locals for it, but I'm sitting in a gigantic sandbox in 95 degree heat, sweating while my skin blisters just isn't for me. Now I'm sure that most of you will think I'm nuts, but I can guarantee you that I'm not the only one down here that feels this way. If you're that person, make a note in the comments section below and let the other listeners know that I'm not alone here. While you're at it, take a quick second to hit that like button as a show of support for this channel, as well as its effort to provide two-sided information about our area here in Central Florida. Yes, getting into the ocean does provide moderate relief, but I don't care for the salt that just seems to burn my eyes when the sweat comes rolling down my forehead as I sit in my beach chair, or worse yet, on some sort of blanket right on the sand. There are some days when the heat isn't just such a thing, but isn't that the very reason you'd even go to the beach, to get away from the heat? Plus, I believe that the best beach close to Sanford is New Smyrna Beach, and that's a beautiful beach in a beautiful little town, but it's also known as the shark bite capital of the world. Another reality of this weather is that most of us actually work for a living. We don't get to spend our days running from the heat on some beach or in a swimming pool somewhere. I'm fortunate in that these days I'm usually in an air-conditioned office, but I'm often out showing vacant land or maybe on a farm where it's well above 90 degrees. It's just not fun. With regular highs around a muggy 94 and 95 degrees from I don't know, May through September, this heat is not what I signed up for. The weather here in Sanford is generally amazing from October through April when the highs are in the low 80s. But it freezes here too. Some years it won't freeze at all and then other years it'll freeze like four or five times. I've probably planted 20 or 25 citrus tree trees on my property over the years here and I think just two of them are still alive as I record this today. Maybe you've seen some of those tropical plants. Well, most of them don't actually grow here. For the most part, you got to go further south for that, but that's also where, you, where you'll get more of that heat. Sanford, and all of Central Florida, has all sorts of critters. Sanford sits on the south shore of Lake Monroe, and it's a beautiful lake. When I was in high school, I used to water ski out there quite a bit. Now, I don't know if the alligators are worse out there or not, but sometimes I'll look out over that water and all I see are gators. It doesn't also seem like I see as many people skiing out there either. We've got palmetto bugs, which are one of the local varieties of cockroaches. They can be up to like, I don't know, two inches long, and it seems like they're everywhere. I don't care how clean you keep your home, you're going to deal with them sooner or later. I cannot talk about the bugs without addressing the mosquitoes here. Mosquitoes seem to thrive here in the Sanford area, especially on the occasional year when we don't have a freeze. Plus, with Sanford sitting on the shores of Lake Monroe, there's plenty of breeding territory for them. If I go outside on a warm evening in the summer, I literally sometimes feel like I'm just a fresh piece of meat for these things. In Sanford, especially down near Lake Monroe in the summer, you're going to have to deal with midges, which are what I usually call blind mosquitoes. Now they don't bite, but two to three, maybe four times a year, they swarm around at dusk for like a week. And you might want to stay indoors, as it can be like another biblical plague out there. The spiders and birds love that feast, but they've got their own set of problems when this is happening too. Downtown Sanford has a bunch of old homes, and this area is very beautiful. But what do you get with an abundance of old homes? Termites. That's right, we've got termites down here too. And if you're a homeowner, especially in the historic area, or if you just have an older home, you're going to do well to keep an eye out for them. Even if your home is tented to remove those termites, as soon as that tent is removed, it's prime food for the next swarm that just happens to fly by. Of course, like several of these things, termites aren't specific to Sanford per se, but they are more prevalent in areas within a bunch of older homes like Sanford has. And bats. Bats love Sanford, which some might think is a good thing. They do eat a lot of mosquitoes, 
But when you get one in your house or you have a couple hundred living in your soffit getting guano all over the place, it's not so great. If it's April through August, you're stuck with them until August, uh, I think August 15th when the bat maternity season is over. Getting rid of those bats can be costly if you aren't a do-it-yourselfer. We've got about every sort of snake known to man, and those beautiful beaches are loaded with sharks. Now, to be honest, they're pretty much harmless, at least that's what the odds say. But several times each year, there's a report on the news of somebody being bitten by one. Just the other day, I heard a story about one really unlucky guy that was actually bitten on two separate occasions. Locals, what are some other critters that I'm leaving out here? Because I'm sure I don't have them all. Before we get on to a more important topic, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Hit that little notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I post other videos just like this. I don't really like to talk about crime. It's kind of a dirty word and nobody really wants to think it's a problem. This is an area that I believe Sanford has greatly improved on over the years and I considered not even mentioning it here in this video. However, I used to have to come down 1792 three or four nights a week, and it always seemed like those blue lights were always flashing somewhere. Back in the day, I worked in an area of town that some of my coworkers thought was pretty shady, and I had a specific route that I felt safer taking every day. Today, that same route feels better to me personally, but if you're thinking of moving to Sanford, you should definitely do some online research and drive the area before you move here. Some areas of Sanford, especially west of town, are very nice, and I don't ever hear of anyone even mentioning crime, but I'm sure it's present over there too. It seems like the downtown district has really done an about face. It's bustling with people out there enjoying some of the good that Sanford has to offer. My wife and I love going down there, and we had dinner there just last night. Crime is an issue with most larger towns, and I consider Sanford to be a large town, so it's here too. I'll include a link below where you can check out some of the crime stats right here in Sanford so that you can form your own opinion. Thinking of living here? Well, you're going to need a thick wallet for that. If you want to live in a nicer area of Sanford, say out on the west side of I-4, it's easy to find numerous options well above a million bucks. Now, they're nice homes, but they aren't cheap. There are some gorgeous homes in downtown Sanford, but they're pricey too. There is plenty of inexpensive real estate here in the Sanford area, but most of it is in older, smaller homes. It should be noted that the Central Florida area, and Sanford is included in that, has an overall cost of living that's just below the national average. So it's not that it's expensive per se, but you can head north just 15 minutes or so up across the St. John's River, and you can find a comparable home for quite a bit less than right here in Sanford. Living in the downtown area? Well, events might seem wonderful, and Sanford does a great job with their events. Downtown can be quiet and peaceful during the week, but on the weekend or the second Thursday, it can have swarms of people from out of town, creating a traffic nightmare with the road closures, not to mention the risk of not even being able to find a place to park. As such, if you're living close to the downtown area, this is something that can get annoying really quickly. I know I said it before, but I really do love Sanford, and most of these items are really quite indicative of the area and not Sanford itself. Sanford has so much to offer, and I'm grateful to live here in the Central Florida area. If you have other items that should be included on this list, please put them down in the comments section below. If you have questions about Sanford or have real estate needs anywhere here in Central Florida, either call me directly or leave a comment below. Again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that little notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.